Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Chris, and of course, this is my channel, Barn on 11970. Thank you, as always, for checking out the video. And no, you are not hallucinating. High definition has not removed my hair. I just got bored today, and I decided to do something different. Um, if you know my old channel, I used to actually shave my head, so it's been a little while since I've done it. So I thought, what better time when the temperature starts dropping to uh, remove the hair off my head? So uh, that's a, that's the kind of things I do. But anyway, let's get into this video. Now, uh, for those of you who've been watching my channel for a while, especially since my old channel, Barn on 11967, uh, you know that I have been collecting gold and silver basically since about 2006. Now, some people will consider me a stacker, especially since recently I've been collecting a lot of uh, silver bars. But if you even see one of the videos that I brought from my old channel months ago, probably the beginning first year of this particular channel, I brought back one of my videos showing some of my um, silver collections, the numismatic coins, the graded coins, uh, and some of my other collections. I was more of a person, before I knew what was going on, I was more of a collector and an investor. But I didn't always necessarily get the million dollar item because you can only go by what kind of income you have to be able to purchase things. But the one thing I want to tell people, and I've based my life on this, and I'm starting to get back into that again because it's been a little while since I've done it this way, that if you're not doing it because you enjoy it, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. And recently, especially in the past year and a half or so, I think a lot of us got so serious about it, we forgot that excitement. And I remember when silver was going up to $50 back in around um, April of 2011. And I remember some of the people texting me back and forth saying, oh, it's going up to 45 and 46 and 48. And it was exciting. It was fun. And a lot of us have lost that over the, over the years, especially with all the fear porn and all the manipulation and all the things that we're learning that at one time people all called conspiracy theories. We're finding out a lot of it to be accurate, if not true. You know, we're looking out for things like Fukushima, because that's still a concern. We look out for things for the Ebola, because people are obviously concerned about that, even though it's not what people think it is, and it's not as easily catchable as they try and teach you in the media. Uh, we're worried about ISIS and other quote-unquote terrorists and problems in the economies around the world. So I can understand where people can lose that fun for what they do. And I'm going to show you just a few things that I actually rediscovered in my collections because I've actually been, uh, due to some of the phone calls and some of the scenarios that have been going on, I've actually taken some of my more valuable items and I am actually, I have a uh, place that I'm placing them. And uh, not everything, but some of the stuff, so I, this way I don't have to worry. I mean, I don't live in fear, obviously, but you know, you want to be smart about things and um, I've just protected, I'm putting a little bit more protection on some of my more valuable things. So the funny part is, un, op, opening some of the old boxes where I stored stuff over the years and seeing some of the things, some of the things that I totally forgot about and lost, it really brings back some memories of the fun of it. And that's why if you saw a video I made last week, I was showing some comic books that I bought. And uh, for the longest time, I used to get, I used to buy comic books, but I was a teenager and I had a, a pretty good run and I actually sold uh, some of my major ones for some silver uh, a couple of years ago. So it actually came in handy, but uh, I started getting back into it again because I realized how much fun it was. And when you do something you love, things happen quicker. You tend to be able to get the means to be able to get things that you want and it just, it just so much better that way. And I'm going to show you a couple of things I found. Uh, the first one was one I couldn't find for the longest time. Now, you'll see it's it's going to be a, pardon the expression, it's a crappy case that this card is in, but I was basically trying to find something to put it in to keep it from bending. And I bought this years ago. This is the 1997 Tiger Woods rookie card. And as you can see, it's just held together because I didn't, it's not graded or anything. I just put it in this kind of case to keep it from getting bent. So that I haven't found, I haven't seen in years. Another thing that I rediscovered that was in a box was this game worn, signed Michael Jordan jersey from the uh, All-Star game when it was in New York. 
Now, if you see, up oh, wrong side, the signature is right there. And I'll show you, it's actually reversible, which actually I like the other side better. He wore this not during the game, but during the practice. So this, when he was in the New York All-Star game, see if I can kind of get that so it looks a little bit nicer. There you go. And on the back, the Jordan 23. So I actually keep it this way, so this way it protects the signature. So he didn't wear this during the game, but he actually wore it during the practice of the game, and he had it signed. And this is another thing that I totally forgot about. This, as you can see right here, is a, try and close it in, a pet, Peyton Manning. Uh, it's hard to see, it won't focus, but you'll have to take my word for it. And this is by Steiner Sports. It's a signed Peyton Manning Colts jersey, there you go, from the Super Bowl. Obviously, it's a replica, but I've never even opened this, and I'll show you. There's the signature. Never even taken it. Oops, probably put it right side up. Haven't taken it out of the package. Well, again, I mean, and uh, that's basically it for some of the things I'm going to show. A lot of it I've been storing away and putting in boxes and stuff like that, but those are things that I rediscovered, and, and plus uh, some comic books I couldn't couldn't find and you know when you put things away sometimes they just disappear on you and it's almost like rediscovering them again and some of the things that i haven't seen in years it just brings back that energy so when you are getting gold and silver for the reasons that i am which is protection for your future and using your money to use it and put it in gold and silver for a storage of wealth um do it because you enjoy it Get the excitement of looking forward to the package in the mail. Like, for example, when I showed that 100-ounce silver bar, I was excited to get it. Now, some people don't agree with the fact that I got a 100-ounce silver bar. Some people don't agree that I got it at all. But I don't get the things that I get to make other people happy. I do it because I want to protect my family, and I enjoy doing it. So regardless of what anybody else's opinion is, it doesn't stop me from the excitement of, getting that box and opening it up and seeing something that I ordered and how nice it is and how much weight it has, or, you know, getting one of those comic books, especially now that I've been getting into some of the graded ones and I've been kind of researching it a little bit, it makes it more fun. So if you are stacking gold and silver, it's okay for the for the reasons of protection, but it's also okay to do it because you enjoy doing it. And I think deep down, that's one of the reasons why so many people will watch other people's channels that show their collections, because they like to be able to be in common with other people. And watching silver videos, knowing that you might be somebody that collects gold and silver, you like to know that there are other people out there that are doing the same thing. But if you're like me for a while that you kind of lost that fun, and it became almost, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. It kind of loses the reason why you do it. Yes, it, it, it should protect you in times when there might be problems. There are no guarantees, but I'll tell you this much. You have a better chance of selling a Silver Eagle than you do a bottle of 10-year-old beer. You know, no one's going to want that. So my thing is, if you enjoy what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And that's one of the reasons why I work for myself. I'm an independent person. Yes, I do the uh, Oregon Pyramids, my uh, organic soaps that I sell. But it's, it's my way of staying away from corporate America, not having to be reliant on somebody else giving me a paycheck in order to live my life while I make them rich off of my labor. It's another reason why I don't put a dime in a bank account. I don't own a bank account. And I tell people all the time, if you want to try and get rid of that corrupt system, stop participating in it and take your money out of banks. It's all about doing the little things. And instead of complaining about genetically modified foods, try and grow your own or shop at a local organic store. Do things to help your local regional companies and businesses so they support each other instead of these greedy corporations that are there to rob us blind. But if you're doing it because, oh, I got to do this. Oh, if I don't do it tomorrow, I'm going to die. Or if I don't do this, I'm going to get sick. And 
if, if I don't do these, if I don't get this gold and silver, I'm going to lose everything. If you're doing it in that way, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. So if I can give any advice to people out there, have fun with what you're doing. Enjoy it. You may not make a million dollars off it, but if you're doing it because it's fun, then you could be collecting gold and silver. You can be collecting bottle caps. And as long as you enjoy it, you're going to get pleasure out of it. And isn't that what life is all about? The only difference is what I enjoyed collecting will actually give me a return on my money. Like, for example, if somebody collects bottle caps, yes, that can be fun. And yes, you could probably get a variety of bottle caps all around the world. But unless you find somebody else that is that much of a bottle cap enthusiast as you, chances are you're not going to make money on it. A lot of people collect things that don't retain value. For me, I've always had, like, for example, I'll show you one other thing. Hold on. I found this the other day. This is graded. An old Star Wars figure that I had. I have a bunch of Star Wars figures, but I found that one because it was the only one I ever got that was graded. Um, actually, that's not true. I have a couple others. I just haven't found them yet. But um, I collected baseball cards, the Star Wars figures, uh, signed memorabilia. Some of it worked out. Some of it didn't. But, I mean, even if I sell, if I spent $10 on something and sold it for 20 I've doubled my money and I can end up buying more gold and silver or I could put food on my table or I could pay a bill. So the idea is, you know, some people think, oh, well, you know, collecting stuff and stacking silver and gold is a silly waste of time. Well, what are they investing in? If you're investing in paper, yes, you can make a lot of money, but there's also a lot more risk because their stocks can go to zero because a company can go out of business. And if a company goes out of business, your stock becomes worthless. Uh, how many people have old stock of the Titanic? How much is that worth other than its historical value or the company that actually built the Titanic? If you have stock in that company, well, how much is that worth other than the historical document itself? It'll give you what, $15, you know? So the idea is to think like, for example, with the gold and silver, you can get a return on your money. And if you invest the proper way and you use it for, like, for example, how I do for long term investment and protection, you can't go wrong. So despite what everybody else says, who cares? And maybe we all need to learn that, including myself. So maybe all the things that we go through with the hatred and the people that troll channels and, and other people that insult what you do on your videos because they don't agree with it. Hey, whatever they're doing that makes them have fun, more power to them but don't let them ever dissuade you from doing something that you love. So I'm not going to make this video too long. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you appreciate the videos that I make, give it a thumbs up, like it, share it, favor it, do all those wonderful things. Give your computer a hug if you have to. And if you haven't been a part of my Barn on Nation, I would love for you to check out my videos by hitting subscribe below and being a part of the Barn on Nation. And if you want to check out some of my more popular videos, go to my main page, Go under the must watch section and you'll see a whole bunch of videos that I've lined up that I think are important for you to watch. So if this is your first video, go from there and have fun with it. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, in the comments, leave some of the things that you guys like to collect and the things you're passionate about. And if you have fun with it, enjoy it. Who cares what anybody else says? Thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night. And don't forget to have your trolls spayed or neutered. This is Barnon11970 saying have a great day. Peace.